I think this is one of the most connected and, and fun teams I've ever been on. How you develop the, the style you're playing? I'm from New York, bro, so. <laughs> yeah. You guys have some really good food spots out here, I can't lie. Kārtējā uh, VF podcast epizode ir klāt. Jau kādā gandrīz, es teiktu, 12. minēsim. Edgars Barbeks. Man patīk to minēju. Nu, tie ir pilnīgi minēju. Un uh, today our guest is a point guard, shooting guard, like VF player, Kyle Elman Jr. Hi. It's good, man. And in the beginning, uh, this podcast, the same as Waves, we have sponsors and Edgars, uh, your turn to give a gift. Yeah, as we heard that uh, you like uh, eggs, okay, in a bagel, but anyway, it eggs. So we have a Baltic Oval, oh, our lit. official egg sponsor of uh, Friga. You will need them, yeah. <laughs> ah, I thought you will do a little bit funnier, sign <laughs> He usually has this like a uh, big intro. Why are we giving eggs? And but uh, yeah, this is one of the best gifts for sure. Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah, the season is coming uh, to the end. Only like uh, Latvian basketball league playoffs left. Uh, like, how are you feeling from players' perspective in this season with now uh, fans in uh, arenas? How is for player to play this, this, this like season? Um, I would much rather have fans, but I mean, it's still the same. You play your game and you just got to focus in more. There's no crowd, there's no energy from the crowd, so you just got to bring your own energy from the bench, from yourself, from your teammates on the floor. So I think it's it's, it's still the same, but I do miss the energy from the fans. Yeah. But looking at uh, the web games, uh, I think the team and also the bench is always very, very attractive comparing to any other team. I, I think that's something that like we we try to tell like especially the young guys like when you guys are on the bench like kind of bring energy whether we get a steal or someone dunks or we hit a three like just bring energy and yell and scream on the bench it kind of helps everybody so we usually tell the young guys that and me Isaiah Kai and all the older guys like we try to you know be the example on the bench too. Yeah, uh, is this true? Like um, I heard this interview with this uh, one um, uh, Latvian guy who now play play college basketball in the states. That in uh, NCAA, there's this thing that you get like a uh, plus points from the coach if you clap on the bench or something like that. Uh, is, is, is this yeah, you get like you, they definitely notice little things like that uh, to the point where like this thing called like bench mob is mm-hmm. like a thing where like people do like these crazy celebrations on a bench and they go viral on like Sports Center and stuff. So I mean, it's, it's, it's a big thing in the states, especially in college basketball. Yeah, because this uh, this Latvian guy, he said in his team he plays in uh, Oral, in Florida. He made it the uh, Sweet 16 this year. There is even even a guy who writes down if you clap or you don't clap, and after the game the coach sees that okay he didn't clap three times and uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah, he, he's right for sure. That's, because I think it's problem for la- some of like Latvian mentality. Uh, We're kind of more. Yeah. Introvert and uh, mm-hmm. more quiet. And I definitely uh, think it's, it is for sure different in the States. I mean, that's where, obviously, I've lived there my whole life, but I think every college does that. Like, where the coaches, they pay attention to everyone who's clapping and standing up and mm-hmm. yelling and being vocal on the bench. So I think that's a big thing in the States. For us, all those restrictions now with two meters and uh, mm-hmm. so on, in Latvia, we feel like, oh, it's now, now it's uh, <laughs> yeah. like we like to live. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, with no fans, you kind of got to get energy from somewhere. So the bench, bench nice. energy is definitely big. Uh, do you like uh, you go, I don't know, to shop or to, I don't know, some cafe? Do you feel some like you, you don't see Latvian fans on uh, like on games, but do you feel that uh, somebody recognize you on the street or say something about the games? Are you no? Uh, I mean, a couple of people have asked to like take a picture or like say what's mm-hmm. so up. Like, I go to Remy by my house and I see a couple of people that that know me from games. So I mean, it's cool. I've seen a couple of people around the city that 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 know me. So yeah, because th- this year like uh, everybody really likes the Swift team. And like this year, is this there are no fans and lots of people write like ah shame this is the season that WEF is actually yeah. I want to see and mm-hmm. nobody can go. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, <clears throat> like you grew up in New York. Mm-hmm. For us, uh, Riga is like our capital city. It's the biggest city in Latvia. Like for your perspective from 
from guy from New York. Uh, do you think as Riga as a small city or how how you feel in Riga? Uh, or do you even call it a city? I mean, no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> I, I, I think Riga. I think Riga is pretty active. I mean, it's smaller than New York. No, for sure. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I think it's pretty. It's pretty busy, like New York City, but it's just not as many people, so it's on a lesser scale. But I do think it's pretty busy, and it's a lot of places to eat and sightsee and stuff out here. So I like it. I think it's dope. Uh, how it was your, for you the climate? Because the winter was, I think, even for us, this winter was really uh, cold. How it was for you? Because last four years you spent in California. Yeah, it was terrible. I mean, even when I was in New York, <laughs> even when I was in New York, I didn't like the cold. But just having to like you know, wipe your car off with the snow and start yeah. your, start your car twenty minutes early, like stuff like that. You get back from road games at like 1 a.m. and it's freezing cold. So yeah, I saw it in your in stories that you came back and yeah. the whole car was in the snow. So it, it definitely wasn't pleasing, but I mean we got through it and now we're here. I'm wearing shorts. Yeah, but so. uh, don't get too hyped. I know I heard it's gonna snow yes. for two days. <laughs> don't <laughs> so get too hyped. I guess I'm wearing sweatpants and a jacket in two days. <laughs> okay, um, so I want to ask you about like um, how it's uh, like growing up in New York playing basketball. Uh, what was the age you realized uh, that okay, I, I, I can be a professional basketball, I can do make money with this? Uh, um, I didn't really notice until like until I got to college, honestly. Like before, like early basketball was just fun. Like I was just playing for fun, and I got to high school and I transferred high schools my senior year, and that's when I really like wanted to make a push to play in college. And I didn't really notice I could be a pro until like my junior year of college. Like, junior well, is a third year. Right? Third year, yeah. yeah. So my third year of college is when I was like, okay, like I could, I think I could do this at the next level. Third and, year actually I, was your best year, I think. Uh, like, uh, yeah, we, why. yeah, we won the championship that year too. Yeah. So it was definitely a great year for me. And I think that's when I started getting attention from from you know professional scouts and stuff like that. And that's when I was like, okay, like I think I could do this for sure. But already getting into the college is yeah. a big thing, uh, right? Yeah, you don't yeah, have it's, to pay it's for big. The, and I wanted, to, like, I got into college and I wanted to be a professional, but like, you don't really realize, like, okay, like, this is what I can really do until, like, you see success on the court. So, like, my first two years was okay. Like, my first year I didn't play much. Uh, my second year I kind of was like a role player, and then third year is when I started like kind of doing my thing. So that's when I realized, like, okay, I could be pretty good. But that, I, I bet you couldn't imagine, imagine that after a few years you'll be sitting here in Riga <laughs> talking I about. I, I couldn't imagine, this. but I mean, I'm 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 happy I'm here though. I'm happy I'm here. <laughs> but that, like, uh, what is that process from like um, when you realize okay I can go to the college? Uh, did, like uh, you went with scholarship to? Uh, yeah. The, if, what, were there many schools that were interested in you, and you choose California or? There were just that that was the only one school that what yeah, was that, that was that was my only school so i mean i liked california so it was pretty easy choice but yeah that was my only school only so, school who offered the uh, full yeah yeah so i wanted a couple of schools local so i wanted a couple of schools in new york to offer me but it wound up you know not going my way and this is the only school i had they offered pretty late and as soon as they offered i accepted it went out there harsh like just one school so yeah uh, but About New York, I want to ask like uh, from uh, movies or everything else, like uh, the street ball in New York. Mm -hmm. Like what I heard is a big scene there. Uh, is, is it true? Did you play a lot of street ball? Uh, For as sure. Well? Yeah, you, you you grew up playing in a park. So mm -hmm. my first, I don't know, my first, all, pretty much all my life I played in a park up until I got to college. That's when I stopped playing in a park. But before that, all my life I played in a park. So pretty much where you grow up playing. And you are a New York uh, Knicks fan or no? I'm oh, a Knicks fan, yeah. Still? Still, yeah. Why Knicks fans uh, booed Christoph Porzingis when he was drafted? Because he's from he's from Europe, so they <laughs> they probably weren't even they never seen him play. They weren't knowledgeable about anything, so you know how, they probably didn't know. But how it is like uh, okay now you play in Europe? Of course you played in Greece. You play play in Latvia now. Like what what Americans think about like uh, I don't know for example. Euroleague, mm -hmm. like they think that NCAA is like better than Euroleague, and if you came from Euroleague, then you are probably not that good player if you played in the NCAA. Or what is the thoughts about Europe basketball basketball in America? I think people people who haven't played over here don't really know because like I didn't know about Euroleague or any of that until my first year, which is last year. So I probably would have said that NCAA is better than European basketball mm -hmm. up until I played out here and figured it all out. So 
I'm sure a lot of people at home probably say European basketball is trash or it's bad or whatever, but it, in reality, it's better than NCAA. So. Yeah, because they're all professionals, like uh, yeah. playing here. You mm. now Doncic came to yeah. NBA after uh, EuroLeague, and mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of doubts about that, uh, how he will uh, manage that, but mm -hmm. looks like uh, it's the it's same for him. Yeah, yeah it turned, turned out well, but it's a lot of people in, in Europe that could easily play in the NBA. It's just things didn't work out, so... It's different and they're just as good as just they didn't get you know certain opportunities that other people got so you're just because you play in europe doesn't mean that you're not good or anything so yeah uh, when you grew up and watch knicks uh like like uh, we had kaiser here and he said he's a role model as well like uh, kevin garnett and uh, who were your like uh, role models as player uh when you're growing up um i mean i like stefan marbury but he wasn't ah, he wasn't my role model though but i i, I liked him just because he played for my hometown team but uh i'm a big russell westbrook fan russell so, westbrook yeah so that's pretty much who I, i like to watch all the time yeah uh you know that uh steph uh, stefan marbury uh he later on he played in china mm -hmm. and he's so uh, famous in china he won three titles And he even has a monument. Yeah, he has a out, statue out there. Statue, yeah, yeah. Was like, but he's really big in China. Yeah. Like, three titles now. He's, I think, coaching or yeah. he's doing something there. When I when I was young, he used to uh, sell shoes for like twenty dollars. Yeah, he has this uh, own like brand or yeah, something. Yeah, it's called called Starberries. So yeah, me yeah. and all my friends used to have them when we was like twelve, thirteen. Yeah, I remember so. those. Yeah. Uh, so yes, and okay, and the decision like after four years in college. Uh, What are those steps for you to, like you, you said, you didn't know nothing about Europe, you mm -hmm. didn't know about Europe basketball, but uh, like what was those steps that, okay, I will go and play in Europe basketball, there, if, if, did you hire an agent or agent hired you or uh, how that happened, like your uh, journey, how your, how your journey began in Europe? Uh, I chose an agent around uh, April of my senior year of college, my fourth year, so after everything was done. I probably took like a month to decide and then I chose an agent. I did the NBA Summer League stuff and I mm -hmm. did like a four or five pre-draft workouts with different teams. And um, it didn't really go my way. I played in Summer League and I didn't play much. So I didn't really get to showcase what I could do or anything. So I think that's when we realized, okay, like I'm gonna have to go overseas and we just tried to pick the best situation, uh, which was Greece at the time. Did you have doubts like, uh, uh, no, I, I, I will stop playing basketball. I will not go overseas or you didn't have doubts about that? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't doubt it. I mean, I was, you know, obviously you don't really know what you're what you're going into when you when you come overseas. I've never been to Greece. Um, so I was just kind of, I don't know, I guess I was a little worried. Like, okay, is this going to go my way? Like, how's my living situation going to be? Mm -hmm. How's my coach is going to be? Are they going to speak English? Am I going to like my teammates? So, I mean, those are my worries, like. But, I mean, it all worked out. How it was uh, in Greece? Because uh, there are lots of different opinions about uh, Greece, like also like money-wise. Uh, how, how, how the experience in Greece was for you? Like, uh, Luckily, I didn't, have, I didn't have money problems. So, I they paid you everything. Yeah, I, have, I got every dime from, from Greece. I know some people who are owed a lot of money. Um, But luckily, I have all my money from Greece. It was fun. I had great teammates, great coaches. Um, I struggled a little bit, like in the season, just first year pro, you just go through certain struggles. So I went through that, but figured it out. Um, but Greece is a nice place. Great weather, great scenery. There, uh, Everything's there perfect. are smoking uh, uh, stands because there's this rumor that uh, in Greece, you still uh, uh, fans still can smoke. Cigarettes in uh, yeah cer certain arenas so like Olympiakos and Panathinaikos like they usually do in there, but at my gym they weren't really smoking inside like that. But I mean the fans are a little crazy over there, which makes makes the game fun. Yeah, the Greece people are super crazy people. So, yeah, it make, makes the game fun though. So you start talking to the crowd a little bit, they talk to you back, makes it a little fun. Uh, did the, your team had they all like rivalry uh, in Greece League? I don't know. Mm, I wouldn't say a rivalry, but um, we had like it was it was big when we went to those went to those teams that we weren't supposed to beat, and we kind of gave them a fight. Like uh, Panathinaikos, yeah. Or or maybe even tried to beat them. So certain certain games like that we all looked forward to. So those games were fun, but I don't think we didn't have a rival. Yeah. But well, you were in Greece, and uh, so this is it. You're far away from uh, home. Mm -hmm. Okay, you were far away also from New York uh, during uh, yeah, yeah. your uh, 
college, but uh, there's now there's ocean in a in the middle. Mm-hmm. You're playing in Greece, traveling uh, to bigger or smaller cities, and well, this is it. This is how it is playing pro in uh, mm-hmm. Europe. Mm-hmm. How was it uh, accepting that? That was something you were expecting or something completely different? Um, I think it was a little, it made it a little easier that I've done the distance from New York to California. It made it a little easier, but my parents were able to come out because, you know, that's only a four hour flight. So it's pretty, you know, it's kind of easy. Ah, from New but, York to Greece. Yeah. So, I mean, now it's, now it's pretty hard, especially with COVID. They can't even come out one time and you know, you can't get a break to go home. So it's kind of difficult not seeing your family for eight months, eight, nine months at a time. So, I mean, you just got to find ways to, you know, cope with that, you know, get on FaceTime a little extra and try to bring some pictures with you and stuff and talk to them as much as you can. Um, Because time difference, certain things, you're going to miss a lot of stuff, birthdays, parties, barbecues, stuff like that. So you just got to talk to them as much as you can, have pictures and you know, just kind of do everything for them to make them proud of you and, you know, lock in out here and stuff. Is there some, uh, like, weird things in uh, in basketball and also in uh, in, uh, in life you find uh, in uh, in Europe? Like, in the uh, U.S., we would never do something like that. Uh, I don't know. Some, some, some of y'all sit with y'all legs crossed. Not like this. They sit like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't. guys, are, guys in the U.S. don't really do that, so that's the only thing. Y'all drink coffee a lot too. So, I'm not this. really. I'm not yeah like that. I'm not. A, I'm not a big coffee person, but I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I don't it, think it's. So it's I'm much sitting. Yeah, uh, was legs crossed like this and drinking coffee, and that's something you would never <laughs> yeah, see in U.S. Yeah, yeah, I would never really. I would never really be like that. But that's y'all, man. But uh, like. Um, for lots of Americans, uh, American people who came uh, to play basketball here in Latvia. For a lot of them in history, the problem was uh, food. Uh, do you eat like Latvian food, or you just eat uh, something you knew? No, I don't. I don't eat Latvian food, but the food here is great. Like the food here is great. I have. I go to a lot of different spots. I don't eat specifically Latvian food, though. Really, actually, we don't have a specific. Life. You guys have some really good food spots up here. I can't lie. So that's one thing I love about here. Okay, let's make a commercial <laughs> for uh, them. Uh, tell which are your favorites? My favorite, my top five. Tex Mex is top five. Tex Mex is good, yeah. Man. Big Bad Bagels. Um, it's this pasta place, but I don't remember the name of it. Uh, so I have to pass on that one. Okay, but we'll um, fine. what else? What else? What else? Naples is really good. Mm-hmm. The pizza spot. Mazo's Pizza was good, but they closed down. You guys know that spot? Yeah, I know, but uh, probably because of COVID. Lots of places closed. Yeah, so they, so they closed because of COVID. Uh, we have TGIs in the States, but TGI Fridays is really good. Um, uh, Flying Frog, Isaiah put me on that. that oh, place. Flying Frog, yes. yeah. Flying Frog is good. And uh, my last one will probably be Bento. You know Bento? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That spot is elite. So those are probably, I, don't, I think I named like five or six. You named, but you named maybe, eight. Maybe seven, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But those, those are my top spots right there. We're going to put links there. Yeah. Uh, yeah they they like should uh, provide you with a free meal. They should, <laughs> real, not real life. Big Bad Bagels for sure should provide me with free meals because I go there every day. Uh, okay, but uh, how, how, after Greece, uh, this, like Greece, in Greece, your season was stopped as well. You didn't play mm-hmm. all season, right? Yeah, it stopped in March, yeah, mid, mid-March. Like everything. And um, what was your, uh, like, how you came to Latvia? Uh, what was your, like, I don't know, journey? Probably you didn't know about Latvia before. I might be Porzingis, I don't know. I knew Porzingis, but uh, choosing here, we just wanted to come to, you know, we wanted to play Champions League. That was my mm-hmm. goal. So to play Champions League and be somewhere where I can have the ball to make plays and, and showcase different things I can do and grow as a player. And um, this is, like, the perfect place out of the options I had, so came here but the, 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 why are you a little bit scared about Latvia because you know everybody knows Greece you know Greece it's a mm-hmm. famous country all over the world everybody knows like I don't know Spain Italy but mm-hmm. probably when you said I don't know your parents or brothers or friends I'm gonna go to Latvia and uh, how about that because like nobody knows Latvia yeah you just I mean you just don't know much about it but everyone just knows it's cold so I knew I was gonna <laughs> be freezing but uh, I was kind of thinking bigger picture, just, you know, I, I, I needed a year where I could showcase, like, everything I can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, I still have a long way to go, but just to showcase everything I could do and how good I can be, 
um, while playing in a really good league like Champions League. So I was kind of thinking bigger picture in terms of basketball rather than destination. Oh, yeah. But I wanted to ask about uh, that Porzingis and uh, you're of, if you're a Knicks fan, of mm. course, you knew him and we always... Uh, tend to think that uh, if we have a famous uh, athlete like uh, Kristaps, mm. then he also promotes uh, Latvia country. as a country. Did uh, in the States, did, do you uh, like, you know about or just such a name as Latvia just because, because of, of Porzingis? I, I knew it just because of Porzingis, honestly. I just knew, I knew he was from there. and So it works. So yeah, I guess it does work. So I'm pretty sure, because everyone, when I signed here, everyone asked me, is that the place Porzingis is from? That was like the first question. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that he, that everyone knows because of him. Oh, but actually it did help because like uh, because of Porzingis in this TV show, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, there was even a uh, like storyline about Latvia. Uh, there was this, uh, the guy in Brooklyn Nine-Nine adopted Latvian kid. Uh, there had this toy captain Latvia, not captain. So yes, I think. It, I've never seen that show, but. Yeah, you know. You make watch it now. It's a comedy show. You should watch. It's, yeah. uh, it's pretty funny with uh, Terry Crews. Ter yeah, Terry Crews. I'm, I'm I'm currently watching Game of Thrones. Shout out! Shout out! Now. To, shout out to Isaiah, man. He put me on. You late on the bandwagon? <laughs> Very late. So I uh, didn't think I would like it, but Isaiah put me on. So shout out to our people. Which season you are? Uh, I'm on season four. four. So don't okay. oh, don't, you don't say a... anything. Yeah, don't say anything. Yeah, no, no. I will not say. But I just anyway, say... the winter is coming. <laughs> the like, winter yeah, is I'm coming. getting to the good stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm getting to the good stuff. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Like, no, no, about the TV show still. Uh, if you're from uh, New York, so you maybe you like Friends? No, I don't watch nah. that. That's, that's, not my, that's not my style of shows. You Which know? one? So name some... Uh, Law and Order SVU for sure. Best show ever created. So. Uh, when we had uh, Kaiser, Mike Kaiser here, he said that uh, he talked about his uh, like favorite sports movies. Mm -hmm. uh, he he had like I think Above the Rim. It was so Above the Rim is the best sports movie. Yeah, for you as well. Yeah. Oh okay. Sure. And, and do you watch now on Netflix those uh, this uh, documentaries, uh, um, Last Chance You Basketball? I haven't yet. I'm trying to stay locked in with Game of Thrones, but that's my <laughs> next that's my next show I'm gonna watch. Because I wanted you to see because uh, I think the coach in Last Chance You mm -hmm. is a. Uh, Really similar to uh, Guy Lee. Just yeah, I, I heard he yells and screams a lot. <laughs> so I, I, I gotta watch it when I when I get yeah. home or or sometime I'll watch it. It's a good show. Uh, so uh, from um, like sorry, I, I can't get over it because we yesterday had a laugh. Uh, it would be so funny to ask Kyle about friends because he's from New York, and then you ask now. Okay, yeah, that's not that's not my show. I I don't think I've seen an episode of that. Well, there's. Uh, 10 seasons and yeah, it's, uh, a lot it's of still uh, the most uh, aired uh, show for Netflix mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, for example, in Great Britain. Yeah. It's amazingly popular in Europe. Yeah, yeah. but it's um, okay. uh, a little bit old. Yeah, <laughs> but I won't be watching that one, man. Yeah, so um, watching like from, uh, from the side this year, it, it feels like the like WEF has a really good uh, chemistry. Mm. In a team, like even like Latvians, Americans, uh, fin Finnish guy, everybody's like really friendly. Uh, do you think that this pandemic uh, helped uh, f to build this team chemistry? Because we all in this together, we all cannot meet our family. We are living in this like bubble year or something. Does that help uh, to build this uh, like family vibe in the team? That's a good question. I'm I'm not I'm not sure. Um... I mean, probably we have less, you know, options to go out and stuff. So we kind of, I guess at first we were kind of forced to be together mm -hmm. a little bit, but I just think everybody was kind of open to each other. I think it's our personalities just match. No one is really introverted. We all kind of talk to each other and have fun and laugh and joke around and stuff. So I think it's more so personalities than, than COVID and quarantine and stuff like that. But uh, but like for you, you feel that uh, like uh, comparing, I don't know, from... Uh high school, college, uh, Greece, uh, do you feel like this season, this team, like, special for you? Because from the side, what I watch in, uh, like, on Instagram, if I follow you or Kaiser, like, uh, 
there are lots of names like this uh, when, when teammates becomes family and lots of those texts. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like, I don't know, special bond with uh, those guys uh, this year? Yeah, no, I, def I definitely do. Um, I think this is one of the most connected and, and fun teams I've ever been on since I've been playing basketball. Um, this is definitely one of the best teams I've been on in, in terms of off the court bonding and stuff like that. So I definitely think that we're all very close and we'll all talk for years after mm -hmm. this year. Whether or not we play together or not, we'll all, we'll all be family still. Yeah. So. Well, because so yeah, the, 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 that is the feeling we can catch uh, like uh, watching. Uh, um, okay, and we already talked about coach. Uh, like, uh, yeah, he he yells uh, sometimes. Like, but uh, what is the difference between European coaches and uh, American coaches? Like, uh, does European coaches yell more than uh, in the states? Uh, like. Uh, It just what? it just depends on your coach. I don't. I think it's it's coaches in the states that yell, and it's coaches here that yell. So, I mean, I just think it depends on your coach. But um, yeah, it just it just depends. I don't think one coach yells more than the other. Oh yeah. So it just depends on you know what kind of guy the coach is, and you know what 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 he values, and if he yells or not. It, just, it is what it is. Regardless, doesn't yell. I think so much. Like uh, he has just. I don't. I think he's those breakdowns. Like. I heard. I heard he's been worse, but yeah, he definitely has his moments. Yeah, he. This year he's the yeah he's yeah. getting much 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 better. Yeah, than, I, I heard he's been worse, but yeah, he he has his moments. But he he a cool dude. He's cool. Yeah, but he had to yell because there were audience in the stands, so <laughs> nobody <laughs> hears <laughs> him. <laughs> so you yeah. just yell. Uh, how do you feel uh, when I don't know? Not not just uh, guy leads or whatever. Every coach you ever played. How do you feel when coach yells on you? Like, uh, do you take it sometimes personally, or you just know it's just business and you just uh, I understand? think I think early in my career I took it personal. Um, I mean, half the time when coaches yell at you, you know you messed up anyway, so you're already frustrated at yourself. Mm -hmm. So you just you're already frustrated. So, but I think early I took it personal. Like, you know, a coach don't like me, coach hates me, whatever. But I think as I've gotten older and my second year pro, um, I'm still young, but my second year pro, I think I figured that it's just business at the end of the day. And, you know, he's obviously yelling at people because he knows you can do better and he's trying to push you to do better. So you just got to look at it from that standpoint rather than, you know, he's yelling because he doesn't like you or picking on you or oh, stuff yeah. like that. So. Yeah, usually it's not, not that. Um, We were talking about that uh, coming uh, to Latvia and that uh, Champions League was one of the major factors uh, mm -hmm. why you choose uh, Latvia. Now, when you're after the, your season in Champions League, uh, all the Europe who's, who are watching the Champions League knows you. You're one of the most highlighted uh, player from, uh, from all that turned out mm -hmm. uh, pretty well, I think. Yeah. I mean, it was, a, it was a good decision. I think, you know, I, I trusted my agent and I trusted the people who gave me good insight on, on this VEF team and told me good things about them. And I kind of trusted myself too. So I think I made a great decision for my second year. How, how was the level in Champions League? Uh, like, uh, did you have like, I don't know, higher expectations or the expectations what uh, was what you thought it will be or it was, uh, I don't know, lower? No, I played, I played, I expected to play high level basketball and I think I did, I did play against some high level uh, guys, especially in the second round. Oh yeah. Um, I think Champions League is real physical and, you know, the refs, refs don't really call a lot. So you kind of got to find a way to play through contact and every possession means something. So, you know, you figure out how to play in, in Champions League and I think, I think it's a great league and it's high level. So I, it's what I expected. From all like, uh, no, it's uh, seven, six teams you played against. Uh, What was it, uh, for you, you thinking, uh, what was the best team you played against uh, uh, from this Champion League season, the strongest uh, team? I would say one of the Spanish teams. Tenerife? I, would probably, I think I would choose Tenerife, yeah. Very really deep, I think. Like, uh, yeah, deep, well-rounded. They pick up full court and play aggressive for 40 minutes. Um, they make you work the whole shot clock. Mm -hmm. So I think you don't really get much easy easy looks with them so I think I think Tenerife will be the, the, the best team I've played against and there are also there are now I think top four in uh, Spanish league yeah, yeah. the real good team yeah how uh, do you think if uh, all the all the shots we should uh, made uh, we would do that uh, were there opportunity for us to get out of the final line yeah 
Um, yeah, I, I, I do. I think the first game against Burger. Yeah, the first game I think we a lot of us played terrible and I and we only lost by what, one or two? Um Yeah. We didn't get we didn't get the best shot at the end of the at the end of the game and then Two teammates caught COVID, so we played shorthanded for two games, I believe. Yes, uh, so, I guess Montan was out two games, yes. And that's so, I, so I think that that was big. Uh, Alex was in Burgos for 21 days <laughs> with COVID, crazy. so I think I think we were shorthanded and teams were a lot deeper than us. I think uh, a lot of us could have played better. Maybe we could have been a little more fresh. We were tired, but we still could have played better. And um, I don't know. I think I think we went through a lot of adversity, but we still could have made it out. We just, you know, we didn't handle business, and it is what it is. Yeah, what the, happened in that uh, game against uh, who we scored the forty uh, against uh, Igor Kera, I think. Uh, no, was, no, no, no. No, against Burgess. Against like Burgess, a, yeah. Like a, what like happened? Somebody on a rim. Eighteen percent uh, from field. Yeah, I mean stuff like that never happens in my twenty-three years of life. I've never seen anyone shoot that terrible percentage, but. Because everybody on the team, was yeah, a, everybody. I mean, everybody was off that day. I think it was like somebody up there blocking our shots or something because <laughs> we couldn't make layups, free throws, anything. So it's just one of those days, and you just got to get over it. Yeah, I want to ask you, like, uh, how it's for you? Because uh, how do you, do you get over after uh, I don't know losses and uh, or bad games? Do you get over fast, or you are the guy who like? Uh, Uh, gets in the head those losses and bad games or you can just like next day okay th um, this is past and I have to work for I mean usually the next day is an off day so I try to give myself you know that the game night to just get over it and then spend the off day don't touch a basketball don't think about basketball mm -hmm. just, and then the following day we do have practice and I'll just lock back in but I think I get over it fast I just you know take the night to be upset and then the next day I just you know try to focus on other things except for basketball And then I just get back to back the, yeah, just get back to business, working out, practice, try to figure it out for the next game. Okay, uh, about basketball, I wanted to ask you, like, uh, watching you this season, uh, like, uh, like we can talk about your basketball style a little bit, but like this thing that I saw, like, you jump from your both legs. It, that like uh, I never saw that like like so many times. Like, why why is that? Is from I don't know from childhood or. Uh, Uh, I don't know. I, I I think it's 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 a good rhythm for me. I like jumping off both both legs. Yeah. Yeah. So I have more balance. So for me, I think it's more so balance, and it's just it, it feels better for me. So I always I usually jump off too. Yeah, because yeah. I saw it like even uh, when there are traffic, mm -hmm. you still jump from both legs. And I'm like, oh, I've never saw that like uh, happen so often. Like, yeah, it's, it's it's better balance for me. So I think it's it's more so balance. Um. But uh, like your basketball uh, style, you said, okay, you like Stefan Marbury because he played in uh, Knicks, but uh, how you develop the style you're playing and, uh, or the coaches help you develop or you wanted to play like that or like this highlighted athletic uh, shooting uh, step back trees or something. I'm from New York, bro. So, <laughs> uh, so I mean, like isolation, I feel like I grew up, you know, playing like that and I think Over time, I had to add certain stuff to my game, like, you know, pick and roll reads and, mm -hmm. and uh, different passes and stuff. But the highlight stuff, the handle and, and the flashy stuff is just, just from where, New York. Yeah, where I'm from. Like, I just grew up playing like that. Okay. But, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, and what was that, like, basketball-wise? Like, uh, Edgar's asking you about, uh, like, your live things. But what was basketball-wise the hardest thing in Euro basketball you had to get uh, used to it uh, you, because Euro basketball is mm -hmm. different than college basketball yeah uh, the hardest part for me was probably reading the floor and seeing like different pick and roll reads and this person helping too much so I should pass there mm -hmm. and getting used to using multiple ball screens in one possession um, less isolation yeah uh, more team more team stuff yeah so For me, it was just less isolation and, and seeing different reads and getting everybody involved and trying to transform from just a two, just a shooting guard to playing point guard too. So I think it was just that transition for me that was the hardest. But is it true that like uh, in the NCAA, uh, like comparing to Europe, like in Europe, coaches has, I think like a, 
hundreds and hundreds of uh, combinations like uh, what's the basketball in NCAA is it's much simpler just pick and rolls isolation and uh, not so much uh, system yes I mean, once again it depends on your coach but so for like me for, you. for me um, I mean it was me and my boy Khalil we had the green light so pretty much 90% of the plays were for me and him and uh, if we didn't have anything it was probably an isolation for me mm-hmm. and him so I think we were, I think my school was pretty free flowing and I think we played fast and we isolated a lot but I know a lot of other schools who run a lot of offenses a hundred different offenses and stuff like that so it's different everywhere you go but for me my offense was free flowing in college and now it's a little bit different like a L- little bit I I think I think we're still a little free flowing but I think we do uh we do run a lot of we have a lot of sets so but I think we have. I think it's a good mixture on this team, um, mm-hmm. a free flowing and fast break, and then half court stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it strange? Uh, okay, let's let's move on for uh, for the next. Uh, is it strange for you to play in a three different uh, tournaments? League, yeah, that is like I'll, champions. I want to say strange. I mean, I I would want to experience, you know, playing in the Estonian league, like going to Estonia that didn't and play, but it didn't happen. So I don't think it was strange this year, just because. I didn't. We didn't really play the third league. So okay, like, there's pretty much a two. So yeah, I mean, but but two two is fun. I mean, it's more games. Like I didn't like playing once a week in Greece. You just have one full week of practice and then one game, and then oh yeah, because thing. you didn't play Euro. Yeah. yeah. So I I like personally that was something I I wanted to target. Like okay, I want to play twice a week. Like I want to play Tuesday, and Saturday or Wednesday, Friday, whatever it is. Um, that was one thing I wanted to do. But three leagues is is a little weird, and I, I'm sure it would have been weird if we had to go to Estonia a couple times. It would definitely. You, if, if the league was uh, like it should be, you would go there uh, ten times. Like, yeah. Man. So I'm I'm sure it would be a lot on the, on the body at least. Like I'd be pretty tired, but I mean it's cool. I just I I like playing games anyway, so we'll figure it. But out. like uh, in this uh, point of the season, uh, you had uh, uh, like uh, we've had a great match, great uh, tough loss in the finals against uh, mm-hmm. Kalo. Mm-hmm. How it's now to like uh, you will still have to play semifinal and final. Uh, how's mm-hmm. the team now feeling? Do you are motivated to okay get back to work and uh, get uh, at least the Latvian title now? Yeah, I think everyone's motivated. We all been in the gym. Um, we had we had good practices this week uh, coming up to the semifinal game. So I think we're all, we're all locked in. Mm-hmm. And I know we we could have won that game, and I know we all felt like we could have won. So we want to go home with something. So we're just, you have to yeah to prove because. Uh, like for me, like uh, from uh, like we've had this really great season, like uh, because Latvian clubs like last six, seven years in Europe was like without victories or and like this season was so good. And then there was this uh, final against Kalo, you mm-hmm. know, just one game. And now I think, yes, uh, everybody wants you to get at least something uh, yeah. in this season. And I don't I don't even think it's I don't think it's something to prove. I think I think we've proved that we're a really good team yeah. in, in oh. Champions League and even at local league like. I think we've proved that already. I just think now it's time to just, you know, just go get that goal so we can go mm-hmm. home with, with an accomplishment. So, Well, on the other hand, that's the good thing about playing three leagues. Mm-hmm. You have three opportunities <laughs> yeah, to get yeah, the title. <laughs> so I, we got to at least get one. So, But that's the same is in, like, in college. You have this, uh, okay, you play regular season, then you have this tournament that is like mm-hmm. this uh, – uh, local and then you go just in the, like country tournaments, right? There yeah. Also so is- some some people don't make the uh, the the march the big march madness. Yeah. So there's different ones. Nit. Uh, there's one that I played in my my last year. I don't remember the name, but there's a lot of different tournaments. Different yeah. tournaments, yeah, that you can play in. So it just depends. So I think in that that situation is the same. Uh, and yeah, how you feel like uh, from guy who is from uh, states. Um, you saw that in Latvia, and, and that actually is a thing in Europe, there is a game in every tournament. That it will be in EuroLeague, it will be in Champions League game for third place. Mm. How do you feel about that? Like, Because I think in the States, nobody plays for the third yeah, place. I'm not really feeling that one. But, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you still got to go and play, play and <laughs> get the third place if that's what you're playing for. But I'm not obviously, I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah, so. I, I, I will tell you. I hope that you will not have to play yeah. because in Latvia league you have series yeah. till best of five uh, mm-hmm. for third place as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to play yeah. a third place game. So, uh, do you are, what do you like better? Uh, do you like better uh, this one game playoffs or do you like better series? Because for me, uh, like one game 
is fun mm. but like i think a series is more objective you know you can lose one game but who can be best of seven what do you like better personally i like one game one game yes yeah it's kind of just like all in all in right there like you just gotta you know people gotta play and you gotta show up and, and do your thing for that one game and it means a lot like that one game means a lot so everybody's pretty emotional emotions running high i think i think one game is is, is cool okay because yeah like I just thought that yeah, one game is uh, there can be more like um, you know mishaps uh, than okay we lost. Yeah, no, for sure. But I I think I think it makes everybody play better because that one game like you kind of got to give everything you got like mm-hmm. you playing for you playing for the championship just you get one chance for forty minutes so I think everybody gives a little more when 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 it's just one game like you you're not thinking like okay like I we'll lose that. this one we have two more chances to to get a game or something like that so I think it's pretty more intense. When you just play one. Well, I hope next year we'll have that Latvian Cup where you play in uh, just one mm-hmm. game. So you will see it. Uh, yeah. The, the, the cup hope. is cool. I did that in Greece. It's pretty pretty yeah, intense. Yeah, it's cup, thing cup in is uh, dope. Europe. Yeah. yeah, cup is dope. Um, about your mentality, like uh, I remember this uh, game against uh, Uagre, what was the uh, semifinal in the uh, final six. You shot uh, um, a really important like uh, three-pointer uh, near to the like when you were down by six, I think we were like down by three. We down three, yeah. Uh, ah, yeah, Ate scored three, one yeah. before. Like, uh, what is your mentality? What what's go through your mind when you have to like uh, take? Because uh, for Latvian people, for a lot of Latvian people, is this problem with mentality? We they are scared to take those uh, uh, final shots. We we better give a pass. Like, uh, I mm-hmm. think it's not for you the problem. Like, what is your mentality? How you get your mind to know I'm gonna take the shot even if the game was not like I don't know sometimes the best game shooting mm-hmm. wise. Uh, I mean I I work out every morning so I mean every morning before practice I'm in the gym uh, me and Davis or me and somebody else rebounding, but I'm in the gym a lot so I think I always shoot those kind of shots when I'm working out mm-hmm. like those three pointers off the dribble so I think you know when it gets down to game time I'm confident in my ability to make the shot no matter how much time is on the clock. And make or miss, I mean, I'm still going to be confident in it just because I shoot it all the time. So, you know, I just have faith in myself, honestly. Okay. Uh, okay, let's uh, end this podcast, I think, on uh, this uh, not-so-serious uh, part. Uh, outside the basketball, what is, the, what is this thing that holds, like, WEF team together? Because, uh, like, uh, I was in the hotel with you guys in the final six. You all play... Uh, all play Call of Duty. Call of Duty, yes. yes. All play Call of Duty. And you didn't um, play before this year, yes? I didn't play before, but as soon as I got here, uh, we were quarantined for like 10 days, I think, yeah. something like that. So I downloaded it. I was so terrible. <laughs> but um, I think I've, I've gotten way better over time. But yeah, before this year, I never played Call of Duty. So I think that's one thing that, that holds us together. I play with uh, with Petrus a lot, M Mills, yeah. um, Krista sometimes. So I play with a lot of different guys. Uh, Alex, IP, Kai, I play with them too. Like everybody in the team. Everybody, everybody, mm-hmm. pretty much. It's a couple of people I haven't played with, but I mean, it all it kind of holds us together the, the the game. And you can play like Call of Duty. You can play in the team as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So a team of four. Yeah. So you, you get your four, and then you play a couple games. So which from the Latvian guys are the best in uh, Call of Duty? Which Latvians. One, which one is the best? I heard that uh, the team captain is a pretty good. He's tough, but but <laughs> but, but in the hotel, uh, Christus was going crazy. So Chris-er. yeah, Christus was going crazy in the hotel. But Igers is good too. But I'll probably say Christus though. Okay. Last time I saw him play, he had like eleven kills, I think, ten kills. So I'll probably go. I'll probably go with Christus. Uh, and what uh, like not, not this season? What is those things outside basketball that you you said you watch now Game of Thrones? Mm-hmm. Uh, what uh, like you are fans of New York Knicks? Did you enjoy like uh, different sports growing up in New York? I see your hat now. Like uh, what are these things outside basketball? Yeah, you know? I don't I don't watch baseball at all. You just, just, I just hat, yeah. yeah, I just wear a hat. But um, other than that, I I, I kind of just football maybe. I don't know. I read a little bit. Like I don't really watch soccer or anything. But uh, I read a little bit football a little bit. No, I don't play it. I just watch. But you didn't I, play two sports, yeah? No, nah, no. Nah. I, I mean, I played soccer a little bit growing up, but that was like when I was young. So, but um, I think off the court, I just like I, I'm, I'm into fashion a lot, like sneakers and clothes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So. If I'm not on the court, I kind of, you know, put a little outfit on maybe. But other than that, I just be chilling. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, because, like, lots of players, like, in uh, States, you play two sports. Because, like, uh, basketball is uh, in 
uh, fall, yes. Win winter, winter, winter. Winter, winter yeah. yeah. And then, the, but like what you do the rest of the year, like uh, growing up, like uh, if you didn't play two sports, like in high school, what you do, like, okay, the season ends, but there's still like a uh, half a year of school and uh, everything and you don't have like, or you still get practices and. I mean, you kind of just work out from there. So like in college, at least, um, so season ended March-ish um, and you kind of took a couple weeks to yourself and then your team has like, practice with kind of like different groups so it would be like me and like two other guards and we kind of work with the coaches and stuff like that but mm -hmm. I mean that's pretty much the time you take to improve your game for the next season so you kind of take that that uh the ending of school and then the summertime to to really improve on what you want to improve for the following year yeah okay. so you don't have to play two sports you could just lock in on on one sport and kind of improve your game for those months take so again to it another it really depends on your personality like when yeah. you're 15 16 years old you mm -hmm. have to still think like no no i have to work not just go i don't know party or uh, something like that yeah i mean some some people value different things but i mean for me personally like i was like i, I obviously i like going out and, and parties are cool but i think you know i started thinking bigger picture later in mm -hmm. college and starting to realize like okay like summertime isn't for you know getting drunk and doing this but, and that just but i mean you can like it's it, there's a time and place for everything but i think you just got to know what's more important but uh, how it was like in uh, sorry <laughs> i didn't uh, but in new york like uh new york like city of opportunities it, it wasn't hard just like to get, lock you in and like basketball stops in this city but everything is happening there i think uh yeah yeah it, it is it's a lot going on and especially like if you go to a to a school that's pretty big and it's, it's always going to be a lot of distractions but i think my parents helped me a lot mm -hmm. um to realize like what's important obviously like you go through things yourself where you got to realize like okay like i don't want to do this but i i, I want to play basketball or some people realize that the sport isn't for them mm -hmm. but I, I think um i think it's trial and error and you start to realize like what you like and don't like over the course of time so I think, but in New York, it was, it, it is hard to, to, to focus on one thing. It's so much going on, yeah. so much things you can do. Um, but I think the people who, who figure it out are the people who, who make it to the professional level. So, okay. Okay. You were telling that, uh, okay, just one college was uh, interested in you after the high school. Yeah. Now, after such a season in, uh, in Champions League, uh, do you receive a lot of calls from your agent that uh, you have? Now you can choose uh, your future plans uh, how you like it. Yeah, that's a, it's a good feeling. But yeah, I, I am in the driver's seat uh, right now in terms of you know having options and choosing where I want to go and what's best for me. So yeah, that is the position I'm in, and it's it's pretty. Uh, it's cool. cool to be yeah. in that position. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool rather than you know trying to figure out what you're gonna do and hope that people. Mm -hmm. you know come along and offer this and offer this opportunity or whatever but how do you see like uh, your future for the for example next few seasons you mm -hmm. want to be in a team where you are a leader or you want to be you in a maybe a stronger team but uh, you're not uh, starting five uh, I mean I, I want to be in the starting five but I just want to be somewhere that's the best fit for me I mean if that's a stronger team in EuroLeague then that's what it is if it's you know, a weaker team in EuroLeague or a weaker team in Euro Cup, NBA, whatever it is. I just want to be um, somewhere where they want me and I want to be there too and it's the best situation for me. But so. you see you, yourself like for next uh, years in Europe, not like going uh, back uh, to States, I don't know, play G League or something like that. You see you in Europe now, yes? Just whatever the best opportunity is. Okay. I just gotta, <laughs> just gotta look it over. Like I haven't, I've been trying to focus on season and, you know, not really worry about next year right now or the next couple of years, but I mean, as soon as season's over, I'll just really evaluate, like, okay, like, do I want to go to the States? Do I want to stay here? Do I want to do something else? Like, you just kind of start, you know, reviewing your options. So mm -hmm. I'll probably do that, like, once season is over, once now I get Now you have home. to finish, yeah. Uh... Yeah, just finish out, take care of business, and then I'll talk that stuff over with my family and just figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I be, I just want to be in the best position for me and just figure out what, where I can be best at, so... Okay. Uh, also, WEF is an option, right? WEF is an option, yeah. So Maybe WEF will be in EuroLeague. I don't know. Maybe WEF will be in Not next <laughs> season, but someday. Maybe, uh, maybe one of these days. Yeah. So we need to send the long term with you. Yeah, <laughs> but you actually played like, uh, This year you played um, uh, against Burgos. There was mm -hmm. this point guard, Alex Renfro. Mm -hmm. He started uh, uh, his... Uh, yeah, 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 I heard he, he played it, yeah. Yeah, first season after college, and then he, he has played in EuroLeague mm -hmm. and... Because that, that, that's why I think actually for, and there are more uh, people that like 
UEFA actually is a really good, I think, Latvian league and playing in Champions League is a good jumping uh, point from like yeah, uh, yeah. your career in Europe. Okay, yeah, it definitely is. So yeah, but not after the first year. Stay a couple more years, and <laughs> then that will be the perfect. Yeah, when uh, fans can go uh, to uh, position, I'm yeah. gonna take that as a consideration for sure. Deal. <laughs> I got you. Uh, the last question I wanted to ask is. Uh, what do you think about, uh, like, uh, I asked you what you thought you probably didn't, you know, knew just a Christus Sports from Latvia uh, before WEF. Uh, what do you think about Latvian people, Latvian mentality now after uh, spending one year, of course, a little bit isolated, uh, but uh, in Latvia? Um, I mean, I think I can really only go based off my team because those are the people I mm -hmm. spend the most time around. But I think, you know, you guys are cool and. Lavi has welcomed me with open arms and my teammates and coaches have, so I, I love it here and I, I like Lavi a lot. So, But I think I think Lavi is a cool, yeah, funny, a lot of funny people here. Yeah, I wanted to ask you because uh, I asked the same uh, Kaiser because uh, my, my, like, I'm a comedian, like uh, mm -hmm. outside the web. Who is the funniest Latvian guy? Our captain. Our captain is by far. Yeah, the Kaiser <laughs> said the same. Yeah? He is like hilarious for real, so he's the funniest person on the team. For sure. Okay, nice. I, I because b before this season I knew him like he's a basketball player. Yeah. No, based on what you see on the court, you know he's playing he's really serious, yeah. tough guy. Yeah. I never thought he was. Uh, bro, the he funny. he is funny, bro. Like he's <laughs> funny. Okay, yeah. man, th th that is my this year's uh, my surprise. Do you have Edgar's uh, question? No, no, just sum up. Cool guy, just yeah. don't watch friends. You <laughs> can't understand well, why. You cannot team, get over it. Come my on. team's my guys, man. He's my guy. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for uh, spending the time with this web podcast. And uh, wish you luck in the Latvian semifinals that's starting yeah. next week, I guess. Yes? Sunday, I think. Sunday. I, be I yeah, believe yeah. it's Sunday. So, yeah. Ah, but you still don't know what we are playing. Yes. Mm -hmm. and there are still series, I think, tonight. Yeah, yeah. So, we're going to watch that tonight. Uh, I'm trying to get a gauge of who we might play. So, we're going to figure it out probably tonight or end of the week sometime. Oh, sorry. The last question. I heard rumors that uh, Kaiser already tattooed player names uh, on him. Is that true or not? Damn, I don't want to leak information. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. You got to ask him. Okay, because he was already on podcast. I kinda, uh, you gotta, who you heard that from, though? Uh, somebody from team, I think. That's tough. I don't know. He might. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You got to okay. ask him. Thank you for being here, and uh, good luck in the rest of the season and your career. Thank you, bro. Bye. Thank you. Bye.